Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and today I have a watercolor review for you. So a little while ago a YouTuber named Connie of Violet Connie Art joined one of my art live streams and we got to talking and then and ended up following each other on Instagram and YouTube and since she found out that I mainly work with watercolors she asked if she could send me some of her handmade watercolor paints that she makes for her Etsy shop. So today I am unboxing and showing off all her beautiful watercolors and showing you what I can do with them. And I decided to share with you the very fun unpackaging of <laughs> these watercolors because the packaging is so cute. So the first thing when I opened it, outside of the tin, you saw the little card with just a swatch of silvery watercolor, which I didn't get around to using, but I'm sure it'll come up in a video soon. The next thing inside here is a little swatch card with labels on them so that you can swatch these little paints and figure out what they'll look like on your watercolor paper. Now, she offered to send me any one of her sets, and so I obviously picked the glittery one. So these are her metallic set that is called the Magic Dust Palette. And so the four pigments we have are Sprite Dust, which is this reddish sort of one. Then Pixie Dust is the more pinky one. The golden one is called Brownie Dust. And then the blue one is called Fairy Dust. So now you can see me doing my swatches. As is usual with watercolors, in order to get the truest color down, you have to get a lot of pigment on your brush. Whereas if you want a lighter, more dilute sort of color, you can go up and down depending on how much uh, effort you go into getting the pigment onto the brush. And so now I'm testing how well these paints diffuse with wet on wet. And I was actually quite impressed with how well the pixie dust diffused. When I had my old watercolors, <laughs> most of them didn't diffuse very well because they're not very high quality pigments. But my red was a very strong pigment and so it diffused markedly differently. Basically, the more pigment you have infused into your watercolor paints, the better they will spread out when you put them into wet on wet. And so the pixie dust pigment ha seems to have more strength of pigment to it than the sprite dust, which was the second one that I tried on the background. Also, as you can see, when the sprite dust is more spread out, it's quite a bit browner than it looks in the tin. So then I decided that I was going to test how well the pixie dust and sprite dust layered. And so on top of the thin layer of those two, I added a layer of red and brown that would be almost the same color without the glitter involved on top of those and kind of darkened it. And now as I am looking at my finished piece as it has dried, the glitter very much does shine through when you layer another watercolor on top of it. So I like that quite a bit. Then I decided that I wanted my main subjects for this piece to be blocked with normal watercolors and then I want to use the metallic watercolors as accents. So I put down the shape of two butterflies with my blue and purple paint and then started adding different little designs with the glittery paint. So the first color I used for an accent was the fairy dust. So the blue one. This is just a very pretty color. <laughs> I really like the blue color and I decided that for the accents I wanted to I wanted it to be very strong so I got lots of pigment on my brush it shows up very well and the background was quite dry so I was able to put little stars in the background and have them not bleed in and I'm also <laughs> and I'm looking at it again now and the all the accents show up really well they sparkle quite nicely and shine so I really like how that turned out then the second accent color I decided to use would be the brownie dust because I hadn't used that yet. And so I did the dots and swirls and also the uh, <laughs> and also the antennae of the purple butterfly. And that shines very well. Although one thing that I've noticed about pretty much all gold shiny both paint and also I've used paint pens to put gold accents on is that when they're not actively shining, like you turn them in the light and one way they'll shine and another way they won't because of how it's reflecting the light. So gold, when it's not shining, seems to really blend into whatever the background is. Almost doesn't catch any light at all. 
when it's not shining so when I'm turning my painting so that the gold isn't shining I can still see the blue stars against the red background very well but I can't see the gold against the blue very well and I can also see the pink against the purple very well but I can't see the gold against it either however when it is turned into the light it looks absolutely glorious so that's just the nature of glittery things but be aware of that especially when I'm taking pictures for prints uh, which I've done several lately that have included glitter or glittery things be sure that your gold ink is pointed in such a way that you can actually see it in the light and that it doesn't fade in to the background and I also decided to put some of this gold into little dots around so it's kind of like there's magical uh, sparklies <laughs> floating around these two friendly butterflies and then I used the pixie dust yes yes on the purple butterfly and that's very pretty I really like that and and I was using it very concentrated way so it sure so it shows up very pink looking and I also use that to make little lines so that it looks like the butterflies are flying together and they've had some movement. Oh, and then I decorated the, <laughs> the butterfly's body so that they had some glitter too. I seriously glittered up this thing. I also wanted to talk a little bit about my colors choices for this painting. I really like the grouping of colors that is in this little uh, Magic Dust palette. So I kind of wanted to do a piece that was mainly inspired by those colors. Pinkish red, brownish red, gold, and blue. And so usually my style would be to put, uh, to have a blue background or a blue-ish background and then have something red, gold, orange in the middle. Because usually I don't use <laughs> orange, brown, red as a background color. It just doesn't seem right <laughs> because you know the sky is blue etc water's blue so having a red background was kind of a flip for me but I've really been enjoying various artists I've seen who use not the usual colors who sort of flip-flop colors or make like faces that are green and backgrounds that are red or some kind of version of that that just aren't the proper colors of the actual things that they're painting and I've just really liked how those look so I decided to try out a little bit of that even if the butterflies are still a somewhat realistic color uh, because color because butterflies come in all colors uh, it just felt weird to make a reddish sort of background and so I like that I liked making something that was different from what I usually do and I'm really glad that this little palette inspired me to come up with a fun and interesting color scheme so this is my final piece showing all <laughs> how it shines in the light at different angles um, in this little shot I wasn't able to pick up as much how the background shines but it really does uh, it has a little bit of sparkle to it not nearly as much shine and sparkle as where the pigment is more concentrated but it's definitely there so thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video bye